Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by AMS Media as ever. I am your host, Harry Simu, and on this edition, we're going to be looking back at Arsenal 3, Watford 2. It's the final game of the Premier League season and it's fucking done and I'm over the moon. I'm so pleased that this Premier League campaign is over. There's, uh, you know, I think back to all the years I've been supporting this wonderful football club and I can't remember times being this bad in terms of our league performances um, you know we've missed out on even Europa League football this season which just tells you how poor we've been throughout the campaign we've been unable to find consistency uh, throughout and we've really really struggled as a team and as a club and there's been a lot going on in the background you know we've had a change of manager we've had a caretaker coach come in for a brief period of time we know there's been contract issues um, you know we know we've had defensive issues we know that the likes of Mesa Ozil have been sort of in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. Matteo Genduzzi's fallen out of favour now. So there's just been so many things going on at Arsenal Football Club this season. And I'm just glad. In fact, I'm delighted to see the back of it. And on this episode, we're going to focus on the game against Watford. Um, recording this a couple of hours after the conclusion of the game. But by the time you guys get this, it will be the next day. Um, so you might be a little... I'm not going to say karma because I'm not angry or frust- well. I'm a little bit frustrated, but I'm not, you know, fuming. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's all about the FA Cup final now. That's all that matters for Arsenal is about going out there, giving a great account of ourselves, bringing home the silverware, most importantly, and booking a place in the Europa League, which of course will in turn help Arsenal to go out and strengthen and bringing the players that we need over the summer. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Let's start off by running through sort of the key events from the game. Of course, there was an early penalty. Um, Dawson just clattered into the back of Alexander Lacazette. And I don't know why Mike Dean has not given that straight away. And what frustrates me the most about it, you know, you first of all, you can't fucking miss that. He's clattered into the back of the guy. He's made no attempt to play the ball. He's just trying to derail Lacazette's attempts to either bring the ball down or whatever it was he was trying to do because his body shape was a little bit strange but he's clearly just trying to you know put a bit on him as they say leave a bit in the challenge and let Lacazette know that he's there etc etc and put the Frenchman off and he ends up literally assaulting the guy from behind and Mike Dean just doesn't want to give it in typical Mike Dean fashion and the VAR steps in Unfortunately, the VAR saw sense and the VAR awards the penalty kick. But I guess what really fucking pissed me off about it was seeing Mike Dean's face after. He almost sort of made this kind of like, well, really? Sort of face after he's pointed to the spot. The VAR has told you, mate, that you've got it fucking wrong. You've got it horribly wrong. Don't pull that smug face, that, you know, arrogant face as if, you know, Oh, there's no way you could have got it wrong as if your shit don't stink you are a terrible football referee who craves the attention and craves the spotlight and you always have been apologies I'm a little bit angry about Mike Dean today I really really am of course Aubameyang dispatched from the penalty spot um, meaning that he was just two goals then behind Jamie Vardy Uh, Shortly afterwards, Arsenal doubled their lead. Kieran Tierney scored. Uh, He looked to place one towards the far corner after Aubameyang laid it off to him. And I think it took a slight deflection off Hughes and found its way into the back of Ben Foster's net. And Arsenal doubled their lead. And you really saw the Watford sort of spirits just drop. You saw the energy sort of draining out of their bodies um, when that goal went in. For a lot of them, they knew Uh, that once that had gone in that it was going to be an absolute mountain to climb and there was very little chance of them coming back and winning the game and of course uh, you know that in itself uh, was was really really damaging but the reality is that Watford had a really difficult task on their hands from the outset today because of previous results because of the way they've struggled throughout the season they found themselves in a really really dire situation and then when Aubameyang added the third they must have thought that was it good night Watford um wonderful piece of individual brilliance wonderful finish from Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang he takes a touch inside the Watford six yard box he's got his back to Ben Foster's goal and he just manages to find that sort of I don't know how to explain it he has the athleticism if you like to to dig out of an overhead kick from nowhere 
completely stuns Ben Foster, stuns the defender that was marking him as well. And all of a sudden, Arsenal are three, three nil up, and you're thinking, yeah, this is, you know, this could be five or six. But all along, you were just thinking, Arsenal haven't actually played that fucking well here today. We haven't been that good. In fact, we probably haven't been good at all. We've almost been gifted opportunities. But that doesn't take away from the fact that when they come along, we took them and we were clinical. And we have been in some of the games where we've pulled off good results of late. We've been really clinical when it's mattered. And we saw that again today. Really, really uh, important. And that's a positive to take from this performance because the longer the game goes on, the posit- the less positives there were, to put it in a polite way. Um, Watford pulled one back. Uh, Troy Deeney uh, from the penalty spot just smashed it just slightly to Martinez's left. He did make an attempt to save it. I think he read what Troy Deeney was going to do, but such was the power in the effort. Um, you know, from that range, it's always going to be difficult for him to save it. I've seen David Lewis get a lot of heat about the foul that he committed on Danny Welbeck, which led to the penalty. He is late. He does catch Welbeck. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that that was a penalty kick. But it all stems from Rob Holding, who played an awful suicidal almost pass uh, and, and lost possession for the Gunners and put Arsenal in a really, really difficult position. And, you know, Lewis is no saint. He makes mistakes of his own. He's made plenty over the course of this season. But... In that situation, I mean, you're almost, you're hanging him out to dry there. And and, and I don't like the fact that certain players get picked on and others don't. Because Rob Holding, for me, was pretty much awful throughout the entire game. I'm going to come on to Holding in a minute. But let's just uh, finish off with the goals. Um, Welbeck got a a second for Watford in the second half at the near post. He uh, steamed in at the near post and turned one in uh, after a cross came in from, I think it was Ismail Assar, on Watford's right-hand side. But, you know, on the overall balance of play, Watford will be fucking kicking themselves because I thought, particularly in attacking sense, they were fantastic today. They created a lot of chances. Emi Martinez had an absolute blinder once again. And if he didn't, then, you know, Watford could well be celebrating this evening and could be celebrating staying in the top flight. It wasn't to be. They didn't take their chances. Some may say that Troy Deeney in front of goal showed a lack of cojones who knows you know he certainly didn't cover himself in any glory in terms of the chances he missed today and he can hold himself not solely accountable but he certainly is accountable for what has happened to Watford this season he's not been good enough when he has played he's missed opportunities he missed opportunities today and for somebody who goes around and talks about other teams and the fact that they don't have bottle and they lack this and they lack that I think he'll be taking a long, hard look at himself in the mirror this evening and wondering if actually he is still good enough to play at this level, if he is still capable physically of competing at the high end um, of football because when it's mattered, he's failed. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on Dini, but I dislike the guy, I really do. And whilst I felt a little bit of sympathy at the end of the game for Danny Welbeck when they showed sort of his face on the screen I had no sympathy seeing Troy Deeney and Jorelio Gomez, ex-Spurs, of course, both looking distraught. I enjoyed that. I'm not going to lie. Um, let's talk a little bit about Mikel Arteta's formation because in the build-up to the game, obviously the team came out. He was asked by the, I think it was the Sky Sports reporter, whether it was a back four. He said no. Um, he sort of laughed it off. He wanted to get away from the interview as quick as he possibly could because the minute the opportunity presented himself, he was gone. Out of the picture, Mikel Arteta. I don't think I've ever seen him move so fast, um, even when he capped in the club. But um, it was an interesting formation because what it was at the very beginning, it was almost like a back four with Granit Xhaka playing like a hybrid role where he would step into the midfield when Arsenal had the ball, but then drop deeper and make up the the third centre-back when Arsenal didn't have the ball. Of course, on the left-hand side, he is left-footed. And I wonder if Mikel Arteta thought that that might make us a little bit more progressive in our play um, rather than having Ser Kolasinac there, for example. I don't know. Um, it kind of worked at times, but I thought that, you know, he obviously had Sabayos and Willock playing ahead of him. Um I just, you know, yeah, at times it looked okay, but to be honest, for me, overall, it didn't work. And the fact that Arsenal conceded so many opportunities just tells you that. And there's not really 
anything else you can say you know it was just shocking it was really really bad um our defensive work throughout and as a result um you know i i don't think that's something you'll probably see in the cup final you hopefully it isn't something we're going to see in the cup final because it really didn't work for me um i've said in the past that in that sort of hybrid position he's done all right but i think this highlighted why Mikel Arteta has felt that he's unable to stray away from this three centre back system we're just so soft centred when we drift uh, you know anywhere away from that and this was evidence of that again I know Watford were up for it I know you could argue that Arsenal are on holiday kind of given that of course the FA Cup final is around the corner but there were concerning signs there and concerning signs about some individuals as well. And, and I said, I'm going to talk about him and I'm going to talk about Rob Holding. I tweeted at half time that in my opinion, Rob Holding will never be anything more than just decent sometimes. You know, sometimes he's okay. Sometimes he performs well, but he doesn't perform consistently. He constantly gives the ball away in areas that you simply can't afford to. He loses track of his men. He's clumsy. You know, yeah, there are some positives and he does do some good things throughout a game. But for me, Rob Holding is just not the guy that everybody was ranting and raving about. You know, prior to his injury, you know, there were songs comparing him with Fabio Cannavaro. And I know that's done in jest and I know it's a joke and I know it's the fans being sort of jovial, etc. But let's not insult Fabio Cannavaro because Rob Holding for me, as I said, he's a decent defender who can do a job from time to time. But is he somebody that Mikel Arteta should be looking at and trusting and relying upon in order to take this team forward? In my opinion, absolutely fucking not. He's not good enough. And, you know, for all the criticism Socrates receives, and he does receive criticism, and most of the time it is justified, you've got to wonder why he's not even getting a look in at the moment. When Rob Holding comes on and performs so badly, when Ser Kalasinac plays there and performs so badly, you've got to ask the question, why does Socrates not get a look in? And it can't be a falling out because the guy's on the substitutes bench every week. So he's clearly, you know, it's not an attitude thing. I think that Mikel Arteta and he just, you know, I guess Mikel Arteta just doesn't rate him. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, nothing more, nothing less. But yeah, you know, it's really strange to see Rob Holding get chance after chance after chance. I don't think he's the type of centre-back that fits Mikel Arteta's profile. As we've said before, Mikel Arteta will want a left-sided centre-back to be left-footed. And Rob Holding has, throughout his career, played on that left-hand side. But he isn't getting that opportunity to do so here. So if he wants to to earn a place in this Arsenal side, he's going to have to improve on the right and he's going to have to improve fast. At the moment, he just looks like he's drowning. And I am concerned about the possibility of going into an FA Cup final against an informed Chelsea side, you know, bar the result at Liverpool. Even there, they're actually, they played well. They created chances. They made opportunities. I am concerned about what might happen if we go into that cup final, uh, you know, with a back line, which includes Rob Holding in it. Genuinely, I really, really am. Um, as I said, today reiterated the fact that Arsenal cannot play with a back four unless we improve in terms of the personnel we have available to us. And it completely justified why Mikel Arteta has been playing the way he has for so long. Um Let's go over to some of your listener questions. We're going to review the season and, and, you know, go into things in a little bit more detail over the coming days. When the dust has settled a little bit, we'll be looking at all of that. We'll be um, doing a full season review once the FA Cup final has been played because it feels like uh, until we do that, we can't really gauge what this season is like. You know, it, it's been a shit season. I think that's not going to change in terms of our league performances. But if we did win the FA Cup, if we did qualify for Europe via that route, it would go some way, at least some way, even a tiny little way in papering over some of those cracks. So let's have a look. Let's go to some of your uh, questions, which you've been sending very kindly via Twitter. Um... Let's see what we got. Uh, Mazaruni says, our squad has been stretched and battered. 
So you think we should jump into the relegated teams for a bargain or stick to developing our willing but inexperienced younger players? I think there's got to be a balance in that. I think it's great to um, pick up players that you feel would enhance your squad if they're available. Of course, with the relegation sides, you expect there to be exits uh, you know, from Norwich, from Bournemouth and from Watford. You know, the, the, the financial crisis, that well, the health crisis, I should say, lead has led, I guess, to a financial one too. And that makes me wonder whether Arsenal will be willing to go and get or, or go and spend some money or take gambles on some of these players that perhaps haven't always performed in the Premier League, but have shown glimpses. So I don't know. I think there's got to be a balance in, in what Mikel Arteta is doing. He's got to try and develop these youngsters because... We cannot afford to go out and buy a whole new squad. So if you can develop a few of them, keep them around the place, they understand the club, it can only be a good thing. But equally, he's got to find the balance in terms of not relying on them before they're ready. And as a result, Arsenal falling further and further off of the pace. Um... Albert says, looking ahead to next week, Arteta for me has a dilemma with his defensive choice for the final. Lewis and in particular Holding were incredibly poor today. Who on earth does he start defensively next week with the choices that he has? I think he's got to go as close to the side that he picked against Manchester City. Obviously, Shkodran Mustafi is not available. So Lewis plays for me, Tierney plays, Saka plays on the left. Uh, not sure about the right wing back position. Not sure what's going to happen there in terms of fitness. Um, but I think Maitland-Niles has improved a lot recently and has proven that if he is asked to do the job, he can do it responsibly. So I'm not too concerned about the right wing back position. In terms of the right centre back, though, this is a big decision that Mikel Arteta has to make. And I think he's going to stick with holding. I just I think he will do that. I think he's picked him often um, of late and... The fact that he hasn't picked Socrates makes me feel like he won't just go and say to him, right, you're in. So, yeah, I, that's what I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be holding Lewis uh, and Kieran Tierney as the back three. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, Ab says, if we could only sign one player during the summer window, who would it be? It's a tough one, mate. Um, you know, if we're talking about realistic signings, you know, I would have said that Thomas Partey was a realistic signing, but I'm not sure that Arsenal are going to have the kind of finances required to get that deal done. And that concerns me, that worries me, that upsets me, because I think we are crying out for a bit more industry in the middle of the park. Um, Thomas Partey is a bit of a box-to-box -box midfielder, and I like that because often that can bridge the gap, can't it? You know, we've struggled to progress the ball forward and create the opportunities that we need. And whilst Thomas Partey is not particularly renowned for his wonderful passing range and his creativity he will just pick up the ball and carry it and that can go a long way and it drives people forward and it sets a tone it sets a precedent in the midfield add to that he's very combative very hard working and I think he'd be a, a really positive signing for us so I'd probably go with Partey I know a lot of people would ask for a centre-back, but I think with Saliba coming in and the fact that we've signed Lewis up on another deal and, and Pablo Maria's joined on a permanent, I can't see Arsenal doing any central defensive business. I genuinely can't. Um, this one comes from Harv Reynolds. He says, we currently sit 16th for chances created. The player with the most chances created for us is Ozil. Thoughts on him being completely left out. What do you think's gone on? We've been over this and uh, time and time again. And, you know, f the official word was the back thing. And then Mesut Ozil goes on social media and tells everyone he's fit and he's ready to play. And then you start to think, don't you, what on earth is going on here? Look, the guy obviously has a bit of an attitude problem. He obviously doesn't see eye to eye with a coach. It's not the first time. Obviously, in the longer term, or, well, as soon as possible, really. But we know he's got another year on his contract. Arsenal need to be looking to move on from Mesut Ozil. There's no doubt about that. But whilst he's here, you've got to use him somehow. You've got to keep him at least on the substitutes bench so that if you are in need of creativity, if you are in need of one pass to unlock a side, a moment of inspiration, you can turn to someone who... May not do it as frequently as he once did, but clearly has it in his locker. And at the moment, we're turning to players who don't have that ability because their attitude is better. And I understand that approach too. 
but I feel like, like I said earlier on, it's about balance, isn't it? It's about using the tools available to you. I didn't think Unai Emery used Mesut Ozil enough, and I think that bit him in the arse at times. And I worry, because I really do like Mikel Arteta, that the same sort of questions that were coming up about Ozil under Emery's reign will start creeping in to Mikel Arteta's press conferences as well. And there'll be that bit of pressure uh, on him to, you know, to, to change his mind about Mesut Ozil. And, and, and that's purely because, like I said, there's nobody else that is able to do that job. Um, let's see what else we've got here. I'm going to pick out one more question. Uh... Matthew Letford asks, what's your highest high and lowest low of the season? I'm going to save that for the uh, season review because that is something we're, uh, we're going to put in there. So stay tuned for that one. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll uh, get into that in a little bit more detail. Um, Deck Maguire is another Rob Holding related question. He says, hi, Harry. What was your thoughts on Rob Holding today? I thought he was dreadful and he has been since the injury. Is it time to get rid of him and Socrates over the likes of Mustafi and Chambers? Look, I think it's harsh to talk about Chambers' his future, given that he's out. Um, I thought he was doing okay before he got injured. Socrates, for me, look, I think he can do a job from time to time. But if Mikel Arteta doesn't see him as part of his plans, and he clearly doesn't because he refuses to use him at all costs, then you might as well move him on. Um, you know, you might as well get him off the wage bill, maybe get a small fee in for him as well. And, uh, you know, we can use that towards the rebuild that we so desperately need. Rob Holding was dreadful today. That is probably my biggest takeaway from this game. I'm not, you know, we won the game, so you can't be upset. I didn't enjoy the performance. I thought it was crap. Um, I thought that we were on holiday. Mikel Arteta said that that, wasn't going to be the case etc etc but I think we can all make our own judgments on that and I think there is an eye on the cup final next week and that's okay as long as we get the the route in the cup final um so you know I'm not going to go OTT about that well you know we've won we pick up three points we move on the Premier League season's over it's been a dreadful season let's put it behind us let's move forward because we have as I said a real real opportunity to end this season with a massive positive and that would be another FA Cup trophy for this great club in our competition I call it our competition because we've won it so many times and it's a competition that I've loved growing up and it means the world to me and it means the world to Arsenal let's go out there let's do do the fan base proud look if we do get beat but we've gone out there and given everything and you know we've given a good account of ourselves and left it all on the pitch and we just fall short because Chelsea are a better side than us I'll be upset, I'll be frustrated, but I'll get over it and I'll move on from it and I'll continue to back the manager. But let's let's go out there one more time um, before this dismal campaign ends and, and add a positive to what's been a really, really negative season uh, overall. And fingers crossed we can do that. We're going to bring you, be bringing you, sorry, build up to that uh, throughout this week. We're going to be bringing you content Monday to Friday this week. So stay tuned. Lots coming your way. We're going to be talking about the FA Cup final, the Premier League season that's just ended, potential transfers. We're going to have a patrons podcast. We've got lots and lots going on. Um, if you haven't already, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Chronicles of Aguna. Sign up, become a member, and you'll be invited to join me on one of the podcasts as well in the next couple of weeks. So lots and lots to come. Hope you're well. I um, hope you've had a good weekend. And uh, look, it sounds a little bit doom and gloom, but we got three points in the bag. So until next time, take care. Ciao.